Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Shivangi Mishra. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. New Delhi wakes up to season's coldest morning as cold wave sweeps North India. Residents upset as gas load shedding affects daily life in Balochistan. And Afghan hospital wards filled with children suffering from pneumonia. And now for all the details. Indian capital New Delhi on Thursday woke up to the coldest morning of the season with mercury readings dropping to 2.2 degrees Celsius in some areas. The country's weather agency has predicted dense fog and cold wave conditions will continue over parts of northern India for the next three days. Indian capital New Delhi on Thursday recorded the coldest day of the season with temperature dropping to nearly 2.2 degrees Celsius in some areas in the morning. According to the data by the India Meteorological Department, IMD visibility in the city also dropped to 50 meters as the capital witnessed a blanket of dense fog over its sky. New Delhi has witnessed a continuous dip in mercury for the last few days as cold wave sweeps North India. People were seen wearing layers of woolens to protect themselves from the chilly weather. Cattle owners in outskirts of New Delhi were also seen employing measures like use of gunny bags and blankets to protect their animals. The IMD has predicted dense fog and cold wave conditions to continue over the northern region for the next few days. Meanwhile, some parts of the famous Dal Lake also froze in Jammu and Kashmir territory, which is currently witnessing a 40-day harshest period of winter. As per the IMD forecast, the minimum and maximum temperatures in January 2023 are most likely to remain below normal over many parts of central India and adjoining areas of peninsular, east and northwest India. India's top court on Thursday gave temporary relief to nearly 4,000 families who were facing forced eviction from their homes in Uttarakhand state for allegedly encroaching railway land. The top court said they cannot be uprooted overnight and some rehabilitation scheme is necessary for those claiming legal rights in the land. India's Supreme Court on Thursday halted the Uttarakhand State High Court direction to forthwith evict nearly 4,000 families living on land claimed by the Indian Railways in Haldwani area, saying they cannot be uprooted overnight and some rehabilitation scheme is necessary for those claiming legal rights in the land. In December, the Uttarakhand High Court had asked railway authorities to clear the land after giving a week's notice. But residents had been protesting saying they have nowhere to go while Uttarakhand is currently experiencing a cold wave. The top court has scheduled the next hearing on February 7. Stay is a but I actually want to have a permanent relief through the Supreme Court. Uttarakhand Chief Minister said that his government will follow whatever the Supreme Court decides. The legal battle began after a public interest litigation on illegal mining in the area was filed in 2013. Later, the scope of the case was widened to include the alleged encroachments as well. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's finance minister Ishakdar on Wednesday said China and Saudi Arabia will aid Pakistan to show up its depleting foreign reserve by January end. The statement comes as Pakistan struggles to quell default fears and has been awaiting approval of 1.1 billion US dollars of IMF financing since last October. Pakistan's Finance Minister Ishaq Dar on Wednesday said China and Saudi Arabia will aid Pakistan to beef up its foreign exchange reserves by January end. Addressing a presser in response to opposition PTI party's white paper on hyperinflation and unemployment, Dar said by June end, situation will be much better than what one can expect. 
He also added that the International Monetary Fund IMF program, which is awaiting approval of ninth review by the global lender, would be completed at all costs. Lashing out at opposition PTI, the term the white paper misleading and devoid of interest. The PDM came into power and prices of water, electricity, petroleum, eatables, tomato, ghee, lentils, petroleum, eatables, tomato, ghee, lentils are all uh, have increased. This is the rule in pes rule apply karti hai if you compare us pe aate hain baad mein 2018 to 2022 then you will see ke kitni tabahi hui dawaiyon ki keemat kitni tabahi hui dawaiyon ki keemat 300 se 500% badi koi aisi eatable cheez nahi thi jiski dugni na ho yo in jiski dugni na ho yo in pe pakistan is undergoing serious economic crisis in the aftermath of historic floods in august 2022 soaring energy costs and central bank rate hikes to tame decades high inflation the country's central bank has halved its growth projections to 2% for financial year 2023 and Pakistan has struggled to quell default fears with 1.1 billion US dollars in international monetary fund financing still awaiting approval. Moving on. Residents in Balochistan province of Pakistan are living a life of misery as they witness heavy load shedding and frequent gas shutoffs on a daily basis. Residents complain there is no authority to approach for their issues. They want they will be forced to protest if their demands for basic amenities is not paid heed upon. Residents in Balochistan province of Pakistan are living a life of misery as heavy load shedding and frequent gas shutoffs have resulted in disruption of their daily routine. A local in Quetta said they call themselves without any guardian as their pleas remain unattended. Once elections are over, there is no political party which addresses their issues. With onset of winters and non-availability of gas, they have to travel to far-off areas to procure coal and firewood for domestic use, he said. Residents said while other nearby regions have supply of gas, they have been kept deprived. If a problem of gas load shedding is solved, fine. Otherwise, we will protest and block roads, a local said. Balochistan is a resource-rich region but remains neglected in terms of development. A movement of freedom has been ongoing for several decades in the region. Many Balots believe that the region had been independent before 1947 and was forcibly yeah. occupied by Pakistan. In news from Afghanistan. Doctors and aid workers have said hundreds of young children are being admitted to hospitals in Afghanistan with pneumonia and other respiratory diseases caused by the cold and malnutrition. The crisis is likely to get worse as a ban on female NGO workers by Taliban has led to over 180 international organizations suspending operations. A report. In a ward dedicated to pneumonia patients at this hospital in Kabul, babies lay two or three to a bed, with worried parents and a handful of stressed medical staff overseeing them as cases have risen many-fold amid winters. An official at the Indira Gandhi Children's Hospital in Kabul said it's been a challenge for his staff to keep up with the constant influx. Hospital figures showed more than 6,700 children were admitted in November for pneumonia, coughs, asthma and other respiratory conditions compared to around 3,700 the same month the previous year. 
واقعاتش در طول سال موجود است متاسفانه در واقعاتی که هوا سرد میشه واقعات زیادتر میشه اگر هوا بسیار کثیف میشه واقعات زیادتر میشه کسایی که اقتصاد ضعیف دارن کسایی که نمیتونه خانهای خود خوب گرم بکنه در زمستان کالای گرم بر اطفال خود بپوشانند کسایی که اطفال خود واکسین نمیکنن این در مجموع یک گروپی از این اطفال زیادتر مثلا The crisis aid agencies say is likely to get worse. A ban on female NGO workers has led to over 180 international organizations suspending operations in the crucial winter months, saying they are unable to operate in the conservative country without female staff to reach out to women and children. اتاق ما سرد است بچی مریض شد انو سر زمستان است قص مریض میشه با تشویش از یستم که چه قسمی زمستان تیر خود شوه دیگه وضعیت موقع خوب نیست دکترا گفتن که ایره خانه بوردی باید گرم نگاه کنی مور دن هاف دی پاپولیشن واز ریلاینت اون ہیومینیٹیرین ایڈ افٹر دی اکنامک شاک پریسیپیٹیٹڈ بائی دی 2021 طالبان ٹیک اوور کاسٹ افغانستان جی ڈی پی ٹو شرنک بائی 20 پرسنٹ لاسٹ ایئر ا کٹ ان ڈویلپمنٹ اسپینڈنگ ویسٹرن سینکشنز اینڈ فریزنگ اف سینٹرل بینک ایسیٹس ہیو سیویئرلی ہیمپرڈ دی بینکنگ سسٹم Sri Lanka's central bank in a report has said that the island nation encountered the most challenging year in 2022 in the post-independence economy. The report states that the government and the central bank were compelled to implement painful but unavoidable policy measures last year aimed at restoring macroeconomic balance. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka in its latest report on monetary and financial sector policies for 2023 and beyond has said that the island nation encountered the most challenging year in 2022 in the post-independence economy. In the report, it is mentioned that headwinds due to consecutive economic shocks in recent years, including the Easter Sunday attacks in 2019, the outbreak of COVID-19 in 2020, and its protracted impact on activity in the aftermath in 2021 the socio-economic and political crisis in 2022 amidst catastrophic balance of payments pressures have severely affected economic activity inflicting unimaginable hardships to individuals and businesses it also said that the government and the central bank were compelled to implement painful but unavoidable policy measures during 2022 aimed at restoring macroeconomic balance The island nation of 22 million people, battered by pandemic-related tourism and remittance earning losses, populist tax cuts and rising oil prices, saw its foreign exchange reserves dwindle to record lows in 2022, leaving it short of funds to pay for fuel, food, cooking gas and medicine. President Ranil Wickremesinghe earlier this week said 2023 will be a critical year for the island nation in which his government plans to turn around the beleaguered economy. as he suggested the worst may be over scores of people flocked a fish fair in india's northeastern manipur state this week which was organized for the first time as part of the imoinu irapta festival during which devotees offer fish to the local deity their fair helped in boosting the sales of the fish farmers have a look Hundreds of people flocked a fish fair in Imphal city of India's northeastern Manipur state organized during a cultural festival this week to give a platform to fish farmers to boost their businesses. Named Imoinu Fish Festival, the fair was held for the first time as part of the Imoinu Irapta festival during which devotees offer fish to Imoinu Ahungbi, the goddess of wealth and prosperity. Around 90 stalls were installed and 50000 kilograms of fish was up for sale. Sirin catfish, katla, rohu, silver and grass carp were some of the varieties that were sold. A senior fisheries department official said it is considered offering fish, fruits and vegetables brings prosperity and progress. 
Imoinu festival is celebrated every year uh, during January, first week of January. And this is a very popular festival. And it also uh, pertains to the rituals which uh, our forefathers have been uh, preserving and observing for, uh, since ages. And on this, uh, the speciality of this particular uh, festival or ritual is that on this day, we offer uh, white or silverly color fish to the goddess uh, Imoinu, and we also believe that by offering the, the fresh feast, fresh vegetables, and other eatable uh, fruits, like and uh, will bring prosperity and progress. Very nice. A lot of people had come here to share their knowledge about the fish, different kind of fish, and they buy a lot of things about the varieties of fish on this occasion. During Imoinu Irapta, streets are beautifully decorated with lights all around to welcome the goddess. People sing folk songs and special cultural events are held. During the evening, offerings are made to the goddess in form of fish curries and a variety of other cuisines to pray for peace and positivity. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com slash sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night and take care. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.